of the Philippines, a beautiful paradise. Tranquil and serene. Filled with lovely people and blessed with abundance. Accessible by land, air, and sea. The Philippines is also blessed with an excellent transportation and infrastructure system. If you ignore everything that's wrong with it. Metro Cebu, it's the second largest metropolis in the Philippines, is one of the most frequented tourist destinations and is an important player in the Philippine economy. Although considered progressive compared to other metropolitan districts in the country, Metro Cebu sadly suffers from an inefficient transport system and a non-viable infrastructure. Fast forward a few hundred years to after the Spaniards were swiftly booted off the Philippines, the Americans began to reorganize, reconstruct, and improve infrastructure and urban planning for cities like Cebu. But World War II hindered the completion of these projects. In the end, the city plans were mostly shelved and neglected, resulting in the haphazard collection of roads that we have now. Nowadays, corruption prevalent in our government results in transportation and infrastructure problems, such as underdeveloped roads, unnecessary projects done without proper feasibility studies, and a problematic mass transportation system. Government projects such as skywalks, flyovers, pedestrian walks, ports, among others, are built behind schedule and also in a non-excellent manner. Of importance is the fact that it must be realized that although jeepneys are an integral part of our culture, it has become an outdated mode of transport. Simply put, the city's infrastructure and mass transportation system are no longer fit to service the growing economy of Cebu. Traffic has become very heavy and roads are too narrow to accommodate the growing number of vehicles and pedestrians. Jeepneys and passengers do not even follow the most simple of traffic rules. Overloading and overspeeding have become commonplace to the traffic. The booming economy has enabled Filipino families to acquire more private vehicles, thus increasing the volume of traffic. Water and air transport have also become a problem, most especially the infrastructure supporting them and their respective ports. Sea and airports are not maintained well and cannot accommodate the heavy number of passengers. And that's not all. Due to the negligence of the respective governing authorities, land and mainly sea incidents resulting in the tragic loss of life have become too frequent for comfort. In an effort to seek opinion on these matters, we decided to ask a few citizens and some not so citizens. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We, as a group, believe that the transportation and infrastructure problem our country is facing is a debilitating one, a factor that grossly affects our economy. For one, the inefficiency can hamper the transportation of goods and services, slowing the exchange of supply and demand. From the point of view of a business owner or a worker, every time and every moment that is spent when traveling and transporting, which could have been made faster and more efficient, is wasted time. And thus, a larger opportunity cost is incurred when traveling by land, air, and sea. In extension, our transportation and infrastructure problems prove us ill-equipped to support a growing population. The system on which we operate on needs improvement, especially with the introduction of newer and better technologies. After some research and analysis, we believe that to improve our traffic flow, our mass transportation system and its supporting infrastructure and human factor must be improved. Firstly, we believe the current mass transport system or jeepneys is a major cause of traffic. 
Switching to more sustainable and efficient ones like buses or trains would improve passenger satisfaction and decrease traffic. Furthermore, infrastructure must be constructed in order to support a change in mass transport systems. Things such as terminals, ports, and airports must be improved and well maintained. The proper creation, strict and efficient enforcement of regulations and procedures by respective governing bodies of transportation and infrastructure are essential to a better, well-organized system in which passengers are both safer and more satisfied and goods arrive early and cost less to transport. The implementation of projects must also be more vigilantly monitored. We believe that the Philippines and not just Cebu is plagued by many unnecessary projects that do not contribute to the overall welfare of the transport and infrastructure conditions. The growth and progress of Cebu, as with other localities and countries, is affected by the state of its transportation and public infrastructure. And the improvement of these can contribute to the economic growth and welfare of our nation.